Welcome to Introduction to Philosophical Reasoning. I'm Professor Bell. I'll be recording these 20 to 30 minute uh, videos for the eight sections and I'll try to lay out the key points that you'll need to understand for each of the chapters that we'll be covering in this course on logic. Uh, to get started I want to give you some advice as to how to go about uh, in this course so that you have the best chance of success. Uh, first off, it's absolutely essential that you get the textbook, the Hurley uh, textbook, and it's uh, available in the uh, rental. It's Logic, A Concise Introduction by Patrick Hurley. And uh, as you'll see for each section, it will tell you uh, in the on Moodle, it'll tell you what sections we're covering. And so in that uh, chapter, you'll read those sections, and the book is very clear, and if you go through it carefully and take your time with it, you should be able to understand it from the reading. Uh, then watch the video, and the video will also help you to understand and clarify the points that uh, you need to know. And then you'll go through the exercises that are at the last slide, but also listed at Moodle. And then there's an exercise video that will go over some of the answers that are not listed in the back of the book. Uh, after you've done all that, if you're feeling comfortable and confident, then you take the quiz and then you move on to the next section. And you keep doing that until uh, you've gone through all eight sections and then you will have completed the course. Uh, I am accessible by email and can meet you at my office on campus uh, if you ask to schedule an appointment. Uh, but good luck. So let's get started. So one of the things that I want to do just to get started is uh, show up a, a skit from the uh, comedic group Monty Python. It's called the Argument Clinic and it's a classic skit uh, other than the silly part at the end. The part about the argument actually makes some important points about an argument. Uh, first off, that an argument isn't simply just contradicting what someone else says, that an argument is a collective series of statements intended to establish and make a point. So an argument is not necessarily an opinion, and very often an argument is not an opinion. Uh, an argument is always going to be something that uses evidence or premises in order to establish a point, a conclusion. And what logic will do, and this is what we'll be doing in this course, is it will look at the relationship between the premises and the conclusion. Um, and one of the things that logic will, will do is it will be concerned with what we see here in this slide, the preservation of truth. What this means then is that in a valid logical argument, true premises always lead to a true conclusion. So truth is preserved in the conclusion of a valid argument. In an invalid argument, true premises may not be preserved in a conclusion. In fact, a conclusion may well be false in an invalid argument. Uh, so what one ideally wants, of course, is to be able to preserve truth and to um, uh, make a valid argument. And so we will look at different arguments that are valid and invalid and how we go about proving validity and invalidity. <clears throat> so first off, uh, when we're dealing with logic, uh, we're dealing with statements. And statements are either true or false. And now not all sentences or things that we say are statements, are true or false. For example, a question is neither true or false. A command is neither true or false. An exclamation is neither true or false. If you make a promise to somebody, that's not true or false. So a statement is something that one states about the world, asserts about the world, that can be either shown to be true or false. Now what logic is concerned with is not establishing the truth or falsity of claims. That is the task of the empirical sciences and uh, experience to uh, verify and justify the, the truth or falsity of claims. What logic does is it takes the claims as they are, as true or false, and shows what conclusions can be derived from these statements. And an argument is a series of statements in support of a conclusion, which is another statement. Okay? Now an opinion may or may not involve an argument, but often it doesn't. 
in papers for my other classes where writing papers is, is uh, required, I will often ask the question why on the side margins after someone makes a point. And the why is basically looking for the reasons that support the claim, whether their own reasons or the reasons of the particular philosopher they happen to be writing about. And so opinions often can be asserted without providing the reasons or justifications for the opinion. And one can simply say, well, that's my opinion. And that seems for many to be justification enough. But an argument isn't just an opinion. An argument has to have support behind it. No, it's an argument has to have a point that's being made, like an opinion, but it also has to have evidence or reasons to support that point. And these r reasons are generally the premises of an argument. The premises of an argument provide the, the basis for the conclusion. So the point being made, the conclusion, uh, plus the reasons supporting the point, the premises, are what constitute an argument. So that's where premises and conclusions are very, very important. And in this first section, we're going to learn to read passages and identify the conclusions and the premises of these passages. And we're also going to learn to recognize and identify arguments from non-arguments. Uh, so first off, all arguments have premises, either explicit or implicit, that support a conclusion. Uh, generally, the better arguments have all their premises explicitly stated but sometimes it might be implicitly stated or implied. Uh, one way to identify the conclusion is through conclusion indicators. These are words in a passage that indicate that this is the conclusion of the previous points or premises. Uh, words such as therefore, consequently, hence, and so on are examples of conclusion indicators. In the Hurley text, you'll see a list, a more uh, extensive list of conclusion indicators. There are also premise indicators. These are words that uh, indicate a reason is being given uh, that supports a conclusion. Since, because, given that are premise indicators. In other words, words that indicate a premise is being offered. Uh, one way of differentiating the conclusion from the premises when you read through a passage is which sentences in the passage answer the why question and which ones are the point. Which one is the point that's being made and which ones answer the why that point is justified in being made. Uh, so let's look at an example of an argument and try to recognize uh, what the premises and conclusions are. Okay, so the space, let's read this passage, the space program deserves increased expenditures in the years ahead. Not only does national defense depend on it, but the program will more than pay for itself in terms of technological spin-offs. Furthermore, at current funding levels, the program cannot fulfill its anticipated potential. So the first thing to do when you see a passage is to say, okay, what is the conclusion? What is the author of this passage trying to convince us? And what it seems that the author is trying to convince us of is that the space program deserves increased expenditures in the years ahead. So in other words, the conclusion appears to be the very first sentence. And when the conclusion is the first sentence, you often won't have those conclusion indicators, the therefore, and so on. Um, and one way to kind of test whether this, the first sentence is the conclusion or not is to look at whether the other sentences answer the why question. So the space program deserves increased expenditures in the years ahead. Well, why? Well, the first is because the national defense depends upon it, the space program, and the program will more than pay for itself in terms of technological spin-offs. And at current funding levels, the program cannot fulfill its anticipated potential. It's another why we need to increase expenditures. So it seems like we have identified the conclusion as the space program deserves expenditures in the years ahead. and. When it comes to the why question, we have the premises. The national defense is dependent on the space program. The space program will more than pay for itself in terms of technological spin-offs. And at current funding levels, the space program cannot fulfill its anticipated potential. So here's an example of an argument with a conclusion and premises used to support that conclusion. So an argument 
or passages that have arguments in them are going to be inferential passages. What I mean by that is that it's, you can infer a conclusion based on the premises. So that's basically what an argument is. It's a process of inference. You begin with premises and those premises lead you to infer a particular conclusion. And, but not all passages are arguments. In other words, not all passages are inferential passages. So there are a number of non-inferential passages. In fact, probably most of what we say and read out there are non-arguments or non-inferential passages. So for example, take this passage. Since Edison invented the phonograph, there have been many technological developments. Now, at first you might see, aha, there's since. It's a premise indicator. So it's uh, being used as a reason to support a given conclusion. Uh, but is the conclusion that there have been many technological developments? No, that seems to be simply a statement of fact. It doesn't seem to be uh, a claim that's being supported by Edison invented the phonograph. Uh, what seems to be going on is that sense is being used here as in the temporal sense, not the logical sense, right? In the time since Edison invented the phonograph, there have been many technological developments. Okay, so that would be an example of a non-inferential passage. This passage, however, since Edison invented the phonograph, he deserves credit for a major technological development. So the point here is that, I, uh, that, that Edison deserves credit for a major technological development. That's the, the claim that's being made. Why does he deserve credit for major technological in development? Because he invented the phonograph. So here we have a claim that answers the why question. And so in the first passage, there have been many technological developments. Why? Well, there's no answer to the why question. Since Edison invented the phonograph, isn't an answer to a why question of there have been many technological developments. But he deserves credit for a major technological development. Why? Because Edison invented the phonograph. So there we do have an inferential passage. Since it's used as a premise indicator for the conclusion, that Edison deserves credit for a major technological development. Uh, there are a number of other examples which the textbook has, and, and do be careful and go through those um, passages that are also non-inferential. Expository passages, for instance. Uh, the sentences develop a point, but don't prove the point. They don't answer a why question. They simply uh, flesh out a point that's being made, provide more detail. Um, an illustration, the sentences are examples of a main sentence or point. They don't answer a why question again. They simply provide more examples of the initial point or sentence. And an explanation. An explanation very often might seem like an argument because it clarifies something. But the thing that's being clarified is generally an accepted fact. So for instance, we might take it as a given fact that it is on average much warmer in the summer than it is in the winter. Uh, but we might not know exactly why it's much warmer in the summer as it, than it is in the winter. So an explanation would explain that fact. An argument, uh, although it answers a why question, just as an explanation answers a why question, an argument establishes a point that might not be widely accepted. And that's what differentiates an explanation from a argument. And a conditional statement uh, is an if-then statement. So the word that follows the if in a conditional statement is an antecedent, and the word that follows the then is the consequent. Now some if-then statements are arguments, right? Modus ponens, if you study, then you will pass. You studied, therefore you'll pass. Some conditional statements will be arguments, but very often uh, they are simply put forth as uh, as a word of advice, let's say. If you want to go to law school, then you'll have to take the LSAT. Uh, that's not an argument. That's simply a statement of, of fact. And it may not even be true that you want to go to law school. And it may not even be true uh, that you'll want to take the LSAT. So conditional statements are also sometimes non-arguments. So go through the text, go through all the non-inferential passages, and when you feel comfortable with the sections for this chapter, sections 1.1 and 1.2, then you can turn to these exercises. And when you go through these exercises, 
then uh, go to the back of the book at, for the ones that are listed at the back of the book. And then you can watch the exercises video and I'll give you the answers to the ones that are not at the back of the book. And hopefully you'll be able to understand why you got the ones wrong, if you got any wrong, and from there be able to go on and do well on the quiz. Good luck.